In this video, I'm going to show you five tips to make using Steam input even better. Let's get started. First of all, let's talk about the radial menu. The radial menu allows you to have a whole bunch of other inputs that you otherwise wouldn't have access to on a traditional controller. I like to bind the left trackpad to be a radial menu in any games that require it. Now, when the Steam Deck came out, we got a brand new version of Steam Input. Steam Input's actually been around for a really long time. And that Steam Input was missing something that I thought was really important for the radial menu, and that's icons. But guess what? you can still get to the icons, just not in gaming mode. So what you need to do is go into desktop mode. Once you're in desktop mode, go ahead and start Steam and find the game that you're looking for. Click on the cog wheel on the right hand side and then open up your controller configuration. Once you're in there, you'll have access to the old version of Steam input. You can set all of the icons that you want and then when you boot back into gaming mode, you'll have access to those icons, even though there's no way to set them in gaming mode. Now I have spoken to people at Valve about this and they did say that these features are coming to gaming mode somewhere down the road, but that was six months ago. So we'll see when that actually happens. Number two, I have to admit that this one I didn't try it for a really long time, and I'm still getting used to using it, but it's called Flickstick. Valve didn't actually make Flickstick. This was invented by a developer named Jib. There's a link in the description down below, but Valve decided to import it into Steam Input because it's so cool. If you don't know what Flickstick is, think of your right stick as your character standing on your Steam Deck. And whichever direction that you point that right stick is the direction that your character is going to face. And that doesn't really seem to sound much different than the regular way of dealing with input. But what it allows you to do is let's say that there's an enemy enemy behind me. I can just push down on the stick and my character will instantly do a 180 degree turn and face behind me. This is how you can be exceedingly competitive in, say, a first person shooter, even going up against mouse and keyboard players. Now, I won't say that that's something that I can do because I'm just not good enough at shooters. But when you combine flick stick with the gyro, you have really, really quick response times and you can do everything with your thumbs. All right, so to, in order to configure flick stick, go ahead and turn it on and then boot into the game that you are playing. Have your character point directly at a landmark that you know you will easily be able to find. Now what you're going to want to do is push up on your right stick so that that character is facing straight ahead and then rotate all the way around with that right stick. Once you've rotated all the way around, if the sensitivity is set correctly, you should be pointing right back at the landmark that you chose at the beginning. If you didn't turn all the way around, then you need to increase the sensitivity. If you turned all the way around and then some, you can decrease the sensitivity. Now in the top right, when you're messing with that sensitivity, if you just tap on that number, you can type in a specific number in order to really dial in how much sensitivity you wanna have for the flick stick. Now here I'm showing you it working in Doom and you might be wondering, well, Doom uses the right stick and the right bumper in order to bring up your weapons menu. So how do you do that? Well, that's what I use the right trackpad for. I have it so that when I touch the right trackpad, it holds the right bumper for me, and then I can select my weapon of choice without having to worry about hitting any buttons at all. It works really well. Number three, you do not have to invent the wheel yourself. Other people have already come up with some really cool input methods. Go into the database and see what you can find, even if it's just to get ideas for how to make your own. One thing that I will point out is that whatever input method that the user had in mind when they created a specific layout will be denoted with an icon. So you can easily differentiate between things that had the Steam controller in mind and things that had the Steam Deck in mind. This is important because the Steam Deck has a lot more inputs than the Steam controller does.
Number four, outer ring commands on your joystick. When you push the joystick all the way to the edge, the system detects an outer ring and you can set a specific input to activate whenever you push the joystick all the way out. You can take advantage of this by setting a sprint command to automatically set off whenever you are pushing your joystick all the way out to the edge. You can also use the invert toggle in Steam Input in order to make it so that you're always sprinting and then whenever you're not reaching the outer edge, you're walking. I use this a lot in older games that were made with keyboard and mouse in mind and I'm playing on a controller uh, like Oblivion where I set shift to my outer ring and then I invert it. That way you're always running unless you only push a little bit on the stick this turns the digital input of WASD into a more analog control method, very similar to say Super Mario 64. Before I get to the last one, if you've got any tips for Steam input, leave them in the comment section down below that like button. And if you're inexperienced with Steam input, leave a question. Maybe I'll make a future video on it. All right, the last one is that resetting is super easy. Don't be afraid to experiment with Steam input. If you screw something up and you wanna get back to like the default controls, you can easily just click on that cogwheel on the right hand side and hit revert changes. That'll set everything back the way it was before you started messing with it. And you can also use that same cogwheel to share your ideas with everybody else. Well, that's it for this video, but I've got another video right here of five tips that every Steam Deck owner should probably know. Thank you so much for watching, and if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Nerd Nest, I'm Bill.